So uh, many to many relation. So I will start doing that. Uh, but before it, uh, we need to like restructure everything. Um, yeah, because um, this is not the correct way to import modules, and uh, not the best way uh, as well. Uh, the best way is to use the sequelize import function, and we should export them in a specific way, not like this. Uh, one of the benefits that sequelize will cache these. So, I mean, in the docs they say so you won't get uh, in, into some issues when you require the same model in a couple of places. So if you 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 require them, you require them from the sequelize import function, and it will cache them. So I believe there is some setup code that happens each time. For example, a request hits your API, and you initialize the models and do some processing on them, and you might uh, require them in a couple of places. So each time something will happen, maybe, behind the scene. So this just caches everything, the sequelize import, and we can just start doing that. So in the users module, the things I will uh, import is only these two things. So the module, and common model and common options. And what I will do, I will create this function. So I will delete all of this. I will, I will create this function. Uh, and assign it to model to export. So by default, this function will be exported. And the way sqlize.import works, it will invoke this function and pass sqlize, which is the same the same one here, the same connection, and it will pass the data, the data types. So what we can do, I will extract the data types we need, and then use the, define the class, and call the init function. So basically I'll just put everything used, used to be in this file, in this function, so I didn't write anything new except for this. And at the end, just return the user, the user module. And I need to do the same the same thing in the posts. So, yeah, I'll just start doing that. So I'll only import these two. And I'll put everything inside the file, inside the export function. So, like this. And that's it. As simple as that. And now, to create a many-to-many -many relation, there are so many ways, but my, the way I prefer it, the way you can make it so much uh, more customizable to create the model, the conjunction table as a model. So users types dot model dot JavaScript. So this is a conjunction table, and the other table is the types. So types to JavaScript. So let's start working on the types to JavaScript. Oops, types dot model. So for example, a user can have many types and each type can belong to many users. So it will look very similar to the user's module. So I'll just import these two things and I will export a function. So this is the default export. And I'll extract a couple of data types that I need. Uh, well, I think it's only the enum. And class types will extend the model. And I will define it like this in the init function. I think we already know that, so I don't waste time. I don't want to waste time typing everything. So dot init, I will expand the common model, put a type property. It's enum with default to uh, this type one, and it's not unique, so I will do that. Okay. And I expanded the common options and the name model is types and added the SQLite connection, object that uh, represent the connection. So that before and after sync and just return the type. So this is how you should define models. Uh, yeah. Um, last thing is the user modules. And one thing, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I removed the relation that I added here. I will put it inside somewhere else which I believe more organized. So in the user's types, I will just put these. I will export a function and import the model and common model. I will create a class, extend the model called user's types. And it's very simple, so like this. So the, the, in the init function, I, I only need the ID, so the ID column, and it's, it's in, uh, inside our common model option. So it's this one. So I'll just put it as the whole table, 
and by default will be added the created ad, updated ad. And uh, when we define our relation, it will put the user ID and the type ID here. So we only need to put the common model here, which is nice. And I will put also the two hooks in the before and after sync and we return the user types. So this is basically it. And the most, it's not that big of change, but uh, here we will uh, change it a little bit. So we won't import them like this. This is not good practice. Uh, we will use the SQL as the same SQL as uh, object that represents our connection. And inside of it, we have a function called import, Oops. which imports uh, a module like this. So you start from the directory name. By the in the index to JavaScript, in this location, the directory name will be the path for this folder that we are running this uh, script from. So if, for example, this will be the path to index JavaScript, uh, so inside of this file, this, this folder, inside source, index JavaScript, if I looked it from the posts, it will be inside source, model, then posts. So this is the current uh, directory and file name you are executing the code from. So from that, I need to go to models, since I am inside source, index is, is inside source, as a top level. I need to go to models, and users.model. And... Now, there is a couple of options. I need another uh, mode is I need to import. Uh, I don't need to do that. This one is the posts. And now it's the type. And now it's the user types. The user's types. Puller. And now what I will do, I will just, all of them, I will sync all of them here. Th that's it, as simple as that. And... I will define a function called define relations. I will execute it before syncing anything. Um, so it will look something like this. So define relation has a function inside of it, which is called common. This is the common options that I will pass inside the relation. So on update and on delete cascade. This will uh, I rewrite this so many times. So I'll put inside a function. This function will return an object and expand anything you pass to it to that object. So it will save us some time. So first thing, I will return the users has many posts like this. So users has many posts, this one, and common which will, which will hold uh, the return value will hold on delete and on update cascade and foreign key user ID. Another thing that now we now we can define the many to many relation, which is a little bit uh, um, more code than this. So first thing, I will start from the users. Users belongs to many types, right? So users belongs, I would copy paste. So users belong to many types. And you need to pass a couple of options in many to many relationships. So through, uh, through user types, which is the name of our model if you go here. So this is named user types. So through user types and the foreign key for the user, so users will have a foreign key inside of the user types called user ID. And the other key is type ID, which which in other, the other hand, the types belongs to many users. But through the user types, the same table, the foreign key for the types is type ID and the other key is user ID. So this is it, this is fine. But uh, for the future to make things more uh, easy to query or more or to provide more options to the query, we can, we can put something like this. So user types belongs to type, and I will call it come in. So I'm going to scale it on update. Uh, no, I believe I don't need to call the on cascade update here. I think I need to call them here. Yeah. So if the type have been removed, remove the relationships for it. Yeah, yeah. I think this should be like this. And this like this. And and here I will put the common. So common like this. I hope this does not bring up an error. Like this. And finally the users has many user types 
and the types has many user types as well. So this might be helpful to find how many each user have types, how many types for each user, something like this. This is this will help us here for that reason. Uh, but that's this is basically it. Now I can write just node uh, dot. Oops. Let me just. So CD source, and now node dot. This should work. Before creating, after. So we have four tables, as you can see. If I color these, this will look more uh, nice. But anyway, so let me go to our lab and connect. We should see four tables. I think if I open this in uh, DB Ever, you will see it more e easily. So let me try to do that. I think, yeah, wait one second, let me show that for you. Okay, you can see it, right? Okay, so that's it. This is our database. Posts, this is the user ID for relationship one to many. And many to many between the users and type through the user types. So we have user ID and type ID columns. Uh, we define that. So basically, I, th I believe this is like um, very good approach to creating many to many relationships but at the end let me go back to vs code at the end you would write code uh, in another fr framework uh, so it, you won't write it exactly like this but it will look similar very similar actually you will uh, i believe in feathers this function exists and you will define the model here you will only define these so i'll only i used to only write uh, this and the common option and everything else is handled by the framework. And inside our index, no, sorry, and inside this function as well, they will define the relationships. So you will need to write something like this. So I think if if you use any framework that uses SQLize, this is the thing that you will write mostly, and the, the column names. But everything else is handled by you, by the framework. And I believe something uh, more interesting I can show you. We can comment all of this and just put sqlize.sync and put false to true. Oops. So let's await that. Let's await that. So we can put this and node. So this will sync all the models that the sqlize has and force them. So this is a good approach. Actually, some frameworks uses this. Does not. Uh, allow you to use or at least does not sync uh, them one by one like this so it will sync all of them and should be the same uh, thank you